This is an ABC News special report. The Boston Marathon bombings, one year later. Now reporting, George Stephanopoulos. And good afternoon. We're coming on the air right now because one year ago at this very hour, two bombs exploded 12 seconds apart at the Boston Marathon, killing three and wounding more than 250 others. 16 lost their limbs. And in just a few moments at 2.49 Eastern Time, the city of Boston is going to pause for a moment of silence to remember those victims. Eight-year-old Martin Richard from Dorchester, Massachusetts. Martin was standing at the finish line right next to one of the bombs with his whole family. His seven-year-old sister lost her leg that day. His mother was also badly injured. And that picture you see there of Martin just months before the bombing, no more hurting people, peace, now seen around the world. Crystal Campbell, 29 years old, a restaurant manager who grew up in Medford, Massachusetts. Every year, ever since she was a young girl, she would watch the marathon from the finish line. Family and friends remember her as hardworking, generous. Her mother said, Crystal was the most lovable girl, a beautiful young being. She loved pets. She loved people. Lu Lingzi, a graduate student from Shenyang, China, 23, she was earning a master's degree at Boston University, aiming at a job in finance. Just last week, her aunt remembered her as someone who loved Boston, who hoped someday for a family and a dog, who wanted to give back to the parents who gave so much to her. For the five days following the explosions, the entire city of Boston was virtually shut down, the suburbs too, as officials tracked down the two suspects identified through surveillance video and photographs. You see it right there. And during that manhunt, another victim, MIT police officer Sean Collier, just 26, shot and killed in his patrol car by the brothers who set the bombs. He'd been on the force for only 15 months, and next Monday, a group called MIT Strong were running this year's marathon in his memory. You're looking now at a live picture from Boston, very different from a year ago, the rain coming down today. It was a sunny day on that marathon day, chilly. All the survivors and first responders now gathering with officials, including Vice President Joseph Biden, Massachusetts Governor Deval Patrick. They will begin to make their way to the finish line on Boylston Street, where the moment of silence and flag raising will take place. Nightline anchor Dan Harris, just yards away from that finish line. Dan, you grew up in Boston, worked around the clock there after the bombing, and saw up close what's being celebrated today. Not just the memories of the victims, but the strength and resilience of their survivors and this city. That's really the very clear message out of my hometown today, George, which is that the courage and compassion we saw in response to the attacks, that can blot out, that can overshadow the evil intent of the attackers themselves. We just wrapped up just a short while ago a tribute ceremony just up the block here on Boylston Street at the convention center. And we heard from some of the survivors, including a young man who lost his leg along with his newly wed wife. Uh, and he said he would not wish what he'd gone through on anybody, but he wished that everybody could experience just a little bit of the love that he'd been on the receiving end of from his fellow Bostonians over the past year. We also heard from another young woman who lost a leg. Uh, she pointed out with some humor that one of the greatest moments for her was being able to have a prosthesis on and use a non-handicapped bathroom <laughs> for the first time. And yes, here in Boston, it is okay once in a while to laugh in the middle of adversity. There was Pretty a pretty amazing day. There was a lot of laughter at that tribute heard from officials as well. The former mayor of Boston, Tom Menino, the governor of Massachusetts, Deval Patrick, saying there are no strangers here, and Vice President Joseph Biden. Listen. We will never yield. We will never cower. America will never, ever, ever stand down. We are Boston. We are America. We respond. We endure. We overcome. And we own the finish line. God bless you all, and may God protect our troops. Joined here in the studio by former New York City Police Commissioner Ray Kelly, now an ABC News contributor. Welcome to ABC News, also president of Risk Management Services at Cushman Wakefield. And Commissioner, you were on duty last year, a year ago. This is the kind of thing that people had feared for a long time, and you had to scramble into action immediately. Right. <clears throat> I was in a conference room, and we have TV screens in that room, and you could see breaking news on several stations, and it was obvious that it was a terrorist event. So we did three things quickly. We reached out to the Joint Terrorism Task Force here in New York, run by the FBI, to see if they had any information at all. We deployed our critical response vehicles. It's about 100 police officers that we bring into mostly Manhattan every day 
to go to sensitive locations. We wanted to raise the comfort level uh, of the public. Plus, we don't know if something like this is a, a wider plot or well, not. And one of the things we learned after the fact is that these brothers did actually have designs on coming to New York City. That's right. When they hijacked the, the vehicle, they told the driver that they were going to, uh, to New York. And we sent our own intelligence personnel to the Boston Regional Intelligence Center uh, because obviously we want to help and get information that can help us better protect the And York. as I said, this was the kind of thing that people had feared for so long because there's no way to have perfect protection in a sure. huge sporting event like this. Absolutely. You're talking 26 miles. It's a long distance to, uh, to protect. It looks like the, the Boston authorities and New York and the Massachusetts State Police did everything they could do to protect the marathon. One of the gentlemen you see right there is Carlos Arredondo. He was spoken about by Vice President Biden in his speech just moments ago. He was at the race that day in memory of his sons. One of his sons killed in Iraq. You see him right there running to help Jeff Bauman, who lost his legs uh, in the bombing. I'm joined as well here by Byron Pitts, my colleague who spent so many hours on the scene there as well. And one of the things you remarked, Byron, also being remarked today, so many acts of decency and kindness on that trail. Oh, George, exactly right. Big and small. We, we've seen the stories, know the stories of the heroes who rescue people. But even outside that space, we, we, we met a, a, a woman who was a mile from the finish line when the explosion happened. She couldn't finish. So once she was sure her family was okay, grieving the survivors, she fell to the curb and started crying, boohooing. About that time, a couple walked up, strangers, didn't know her. It was a preacher and his wife from out west. The man said, young lady, you okay? She said, yes, sir, I'm fine. He said, did you finish the race? She says, no, I didn't. He took off his medal, because he had run the race, put it on her neck and says, yeah, you did, you're a winner. They walked away. We met up with them later, and, uh, and I asked him, like, why, why would you do this? This is your first Boston Marathon. Why give away your medal? He said, well, at the time, it seemed like the decent thing to do. And we're seeing that right there. Yeah, yeah. She's overcome. Oh, very emotional. Yeah, she thanked him. They met through Facebook. Uh, she wanted to find out who the stranger was. She went on Facebook. And then when we told the story, we got involved and, and helped make for that reunion. Lindsay Davis also on the scene that day and for many days after uh, the bombing when there was so much fear across that city, across that entire region because no one knew where these bombers were, if they would strike again. And you described the scene as a mixture of, of chaos and extreme organization and discipline. Exactly, and it was that contrast that particularly struck me on that day. You know, we arrived uh, about two and a half hours after the bombings and, you know, many people saw the pictures, obviously, of the chaos, but where we were, just about two blocks away from the finish line of Boylston, um, you still saw the runners, even many hours after the bombings had gone off, with their numbers on, walking around just with a lot of confusion, asking uh, police officers for help, where they could reunite with their families. Not only that, but where could they find out if their families were still safe. And then, of course, we all saw the pictures of the chaos. But from my perspective, where we were standing, you know, you had a very methodical approach from the first responders and also the police officers. We were at a staging area where they were lining the ambulances and it, it would be no exaggeration to say that for as far as the eye could see, they had these ambulances. This was indeed organized chaos. No question about that. I want to go back to the scene right now. We just saw the family, Martin Richard, right there, walking on to the scene. I want to go back to Dan Harris as well, as we hear the bagpipes in the background. One of the reasons this hit so hard in Boston, because it's the, the, the day of the marathon, Patriots Day, is a day when so many families come out to celebrate, celebrate their state, celebrate this race. You gotta, it's hard to over, overstate the importance of the marathon in this city. We consider it the most prestigious road race on earth. It is part of family traditions, including my own family. Since I was a little boy, the marathon goes right by my family home. My dad used to run it. And so to attack what is a mainstay of our culture is really an attack on all of us. Uh, and what we're trying to show today is you can knock us down, but not for long, George. And we see the officials gathering near the finish line right now as they prepare for the singing of God Bless America. While the storm clouds gather far across the sea, let us swear allegiance to a land that's free. Let us all be grateful for a land so fair as we raise our voices in a storm. 
Ronan Tynan singing God Bless America. You see Vice Ladies President Biden and there. At this time, we ask that you join us in a moment of silence. Flag being raised, church bells ringing across Boston in memory of the victims one year ago of the bombings at the Boston Marathon. President Obama observing a moment of silence as well in private at the Oval Office this afternoon. 
see Vice President Biden there joined by the mayor of Boston, the former mayor of Boston, Massachusetts Governor Deval Patrick, to honor the victims and the survivors and to celebrate the resilience of a city who, as Vice President Biden said, would not stand down. And Dan Harris, you are right by that finish line right there. And just about one week from now, next Monday, on Patriots Day 2014, more people will run that Boston Marathon than ever. Yeah, you know, this display of grit and resolve is not over. In six days, it's Marathon Monday, and it is going to be huge. We're talking about 9,000 more runners than last year. A million spectators, they estimate. That's double the average. There's going to be a lot of extra security, of course, extra cameras along the route, extra police personnel, extra barricades. You're likely to have your bag searched if you bring one. But uh, the head of the Boston Athletic Association telling us this is going to be the safest place on planet Earth on Monday. Commissioner Kelly, there have been so many security reviews of the situation in Boston one year ago. Uh, clear that the Russians probably could have provided us more intelligence that they did. What is the most important thing that we learned coming out of this incident? Well, there's been three reports. Two of them have recommended that the FBI should uh, share information more readily with local authorities, state and local police. You know, people have been talking about that for a while. Hopefully that's going to happen. Jim Comey, the director of the FBI, said they're moving in that, in that direction. But uh, we believe that local authorities have that granular information that can help in a case like this and other cases. So mm -hmm. hopefully that'll be going forward. And Byron Pitts, as we listen to these bagpipes, we also learned that Boston is one of the strongest cities in America. Oh, George, without question. As we stand, see the folks standing in the rain, I'm reminded of one year after Oklahoma City, one year after 9-11, that in America we prove every time that evil can take the lead, but it never wins. And so fitting in some ways, watching the response to all this, Lindsay Davis, uh, that it happened at a marathon where people were fueled uh, by energy and patriotism on Patriots Day. Right. I mean, you have just the essence of the marathon is adrenaline, right? So the people who are participating in it, uh, we heard so many stories that day of people who had actually finished the race and then ran back to help. And then you have, by nature, the people who were coming to support and cheer on. These are people who want to see other people do well. And then you had the first responders there. So this wasn't a help is on the way. This is a help is here for you now. And in the subsequent days, we heard the Boston Strong chants. But on this day, you didn't hear it. You saw it. You saw it, and you will see it again next Monday, Patriots Day 2014, when the Boston Marathon is run again. We are going to leave you now with a look back at that tribute one more time and the song Go the Distance. Much more tonight on World News with Diane Sawyer. Uh, we always have all of our information on abcnews.com, and I'll see you tomorrow on GMA. Here's Go the Distance. Road to embrace my fate. Though that road may wander, it will lead me to you. And a thousand years would be worth the wait. It might take a lifetime, but somehow I'll see. We'll join our programming after these messages. Take everything.